Number one is to review the client's previous medical records and doctor's order sheet if avail available. Then determine the scope of assessment and prepared necessary equipment. So, a measuring tape, a centimeter ruler, a pen, stethoscope, and a small pillow. Then perform hand washing. Then to deter the spread of microorganisms. So hi sir, my name is Michael Altsausen and I am a student nurse for, from Dava Doctors College. May I know your name? Jade William. Okay, so when is your birth date? December 23, 1982. Okay, so may I check your wristband? Okay, so your name is Jade Williana and you were born on December 23, 1992. Okay, so, so sir, what do you want me to call you for, sir? Uh, just call me sir. Okay, so, so sir, what I'm going to do is to assess your abdomen. The purpose of this assessment is to get more information um, that could indicate what is causing your symptoms and identify any abnormalities in the abdomen. All you have to do is just do simple steps as I ask you to do. And I can assure you that this assessment is safe. Um, so sir, just be comfortable and as you can see, I close the curtains and close the door to provide your privacy. So I have some following questions. Is that okay for you, sir? Okay. Okay, so sir, do you, do you feel any abdominal pain in your stomach? No. No. So do you have a past history of abdominal pain? No. Okay, so any con constipation and diarrhea? No. Um, change of appetite? No. Uh, frequency of um, in infection? No. Um, what food did you eat for the past 24 hours, sir? Just regular foods. Regular foods. Oh. So, sir, I'll ask you to empty your bladder to avoid the examination being uncomfortable and reducing the accuracy of the fundal height measurement. Okay. So in surveying the abdomen, position the client in supine position. Cover the upper and lower body parts with the bed sheet, leaving the abdomen exposed. So in observing the abdominal skin, note for any vascularities, note for any stray, and uh, assess for scars, lesions, and rashes, and document its location by quadrant reference lines. So you must also inspect for umbilical for its color, contour, and location. So when inspecting the contour, the client lies supine on the bed while I sit beside the client. I look across the abdomen at a level slightly higher than the client's abdomen. So next is to inspect the abdominal girth. Inspect the area in between the lower ribs and pubic bone and note for any abdominal enlargement. So next is to measure the abdominal girth. So let us ensure the client to empty his bladder. So, um, so sir, can you kindly um, empty your bladder for sir? Okay. So the client is already in a supine position, um, you must use disposable, disposable easily clean tape measure and place the tape measure behind the client and measure starting on the umbilicus. Then record the distance on designated units and take all future measurements from the same location especially for noted distension. And um, mark the abdomen with a ballpoint pen to aid the measuring site and and ask the 
and ask the client not to wash the mark until it is no longer needed. So sir, um, I'll ask you to not wash it until it is no longer needed. And so for checking for symmetry, ask the client to raise his or her head to further assess for her nation or the stasis. To inspect the abdominal movement when the client breathes. So sir, can you kindly can raise up? Okay. okay. So can you, can you go back now? And so for the auscultation for the vowel sounds, you, so we must use the diaphragm of the stethoscope and make sure that it is warm before placing on the abdomen. And so apply light pressure or simple pre simple rest the stethoscope if the abdomen is tender or painful. Help for the intensity, pitch, and frequency of the sounds. So for auscultation for the vascular sounds, we must use the bell of the stethoscope to listen for brutes over the abdominal aorta. Then we'll, we will proceed for the vi for the venous hum. Um, we must also use the belt of, of the stethoscope to listen for venous hum in the epigastric and umbilical area. Then for the friction rub, um, place the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the right and lower rib cage and left. We will now proceed for the percussion of for the tone with the percussion hand technique. Uh, lightly and systematically percuss and quadrants. Percussion may proceed clockwise or up and down over the abdomen. Now for the span or height of the liver. So, um, determining the lower border by percussing beginning from the right lower quadrant at the mid-clavicular line, then upwards. The note for the changes from tympani to dullness. Mark the area of dullness, the liver border of dullness. For the assessment of the descent of the liver, um, locate the liver border of dullness, ask the client to take a deep breath, um, observe for the descent of the lower border of the liver dullness below the costal margin, in a deep inspiration and the client hold his or her breath, then perform percussion and ask the client to exhale afterwards. Okay, sir, can you take deep breaths, Paul? Okay, now can you hold your breath closer? Okay, now for the upper border of the liver, locate the upper right chest at the midclavicular lane and percuss downward. Um, mark the point where change from the upper right chest 
or lung resonance until liver dullness is noted. This is the upper border of the liver dullness. So this is the two marks. And then repeat the percussion of liver at the midsternal line. And next is to percuss the spleen. Um, we must begin percussion on the posterior to the left mid auxiliary line. We must also determine enlargement. Um, ask the patient to take a deep breath and start percussing on the last left interspace inter at the anterior auxiliary line. So, okay, sir, can you turn to your right box, sir? Now for the blunt percuss on the liver, ask the, ask the client to sit with his back to you. Then place the left hand fist against the lower right anterior rib cage. Then use the ulnar side of the right fist and strike the left hand. And note for any tenderness. So sir, may you need to sit up straight? The percussion on kidney. Ask the client to sit his back to you, then place the left hand on the costal vertebral angle. Then repeat the steps 44 and 45. Now we will proceed for the test for abdominal distension. Percuss the flanks from the bed upward toward the umbilical, umbilicus. Assist the client to turn into the side, percuss the abdomen from the bed upward, and mark the level where dullness changed to tympani. You know, sir, can you please turn to your right side? And now to perform the fluid wave test, ask the client to place the ulnar side of, the, of his hand and the lateral side of the forearm firmly along the midline of the abdomen. Then firmly place the palmar surface of fingers and hand against one side of the patient's abdomen. Use the other hand to tap the opposite side of the abdominal wall and then note for any fluid movement. Okay, sir, can you... Okay. Like this. Okay. okay, so now we will proceed to the palpation. Um, we must position the client back in supine position. Cover the, the upper and the lower body part up with the bed sheet leaving the abdomen exposed. Then begin palpating on the non-tender abdominal quadrant. Um, use fingertips to compress the, the quadrant to a depth of 1 cm in a dripping motion.
And now for the pulp fake for masses, use fingertips to compress all quadrants to a depth of 1 cm in a dipping motion. Next is to palpate the umbilicals. Note for any swelling, bulges, and masses. Then for the palpation of the aorta, um, assess the pulsation. Next is to palpate the liver, stand at the client's right side. Note that the fingertips should point toward the client's head. Then ask the client to inhale then compress upward and inward with fingers. Note for the consistency and tenderness. So, sir, can you please inhale? And then exhale. Next is to palpate by hooking. Okay, you name it now. Exhale. Next is for the test of chlorocytosis. Pros fingertips under the border of the right costal margin and ask the patient to inhale deeply. Note for the right upper quadrant, pain and tenderness. Can you inhale deeply? Okay, you may now exhale. Next is to palpate the spleen. Um, once again, stand at the client's right side. Then reach over the abdomen with the left arm and place left hand under the posterior lower ribs. Ask the client to inhale and press inward and upward while providing support with the other hand. Note for consistency and tender, tenderness. So sir, can you please turn to your left side? Next is to palpate the kidneys, begin palpating at the symphysis, pubis, and more upward and outward to estimate bladder borders. Note for consistency and tenderness. Next is to perform hypersensitivity test. Uh, stroke the abdomen with a sharp object or grasp or fold of your skin with your thumb and index finger and quickly let go. Then repeat the step 102. Next is for the test of the SOA sign. Ask the client to lay on the left side, then hyperextend the right leg of the client. Note for pain and reaction of the client. So sir, can you lay on your left side? Okay. Do, you feel, do you feel any pain sir? No. Next is the test for the obturator sign. 
hold and support the client's right knee and ankle. Then flex the knee and hip and rotate the leg internally and externally. Yes, sir, we will raise this knee. Then lastly is the test for the appendicitis. Now assess the rebound tenderness by palpating deeply at 90 degrees into the abdomen away from the painful or tender area. That's it, right? No. Okay. So, sir, the assessment is done. The, the abdomen skin is paler than the general skin tone because the skin is not exposed to natural elements at all time. The contour is inverted, no more than 0.5 cm, and it's round. The abdomen is symmetric, peristaltic waves are not visible. For vowel sounds, a prolonged gurgle was heard, was heard at the rate of 5 to 30 per minute, so it's normal. Um, the vascular sounds was normal because there are no roots heard over the abdominal aorta, no venoms. No venous pumps was heard. No friction, no friction rub over the liver and spleen. In percussion, there, there were generalized tympani. Normal dullness was heard over the liver and spleen. The span or height of the liver is normal. The same with the, the descent of the liver. The upper border of liver dullness is located between the left fifth and seven intercostal spaces. The liver span is 10 centimeters. The spleen is 7 centimeters. No tenderness in percuss percussing the liver. There are no abdominal distension. No fluid has been transmitted in the fluid wave test. In palpation so far, it is normal. No palp palpable ma masses are present. The umbilicals have no abnormalities like bulges or swelling. Palpating the aorta, the size is the size. Ah, the size is 2.5 to 3 centimeters wide with a strong pulse. In cholecystitis, there are no pain present. The spleen is palpable at the left costal margin. The kidneys are not palpable, which is normal. And for the hypersensitivity test, you show no pain and no exaggerated reaction. The same with the saw sign. For the obturator sign, there are no abdominal pain. And finally, for the test of appendicitis, no rebound tenderness. Is, sir, do you have any concerns, sir? No. Do you have any questions? No. So, okay, sir, that was all. And that was a good assessment. So, thank you so much for your cooperation, Pastor.